Hi folks, how are you doing? I want to just say a few words about database design with regards to authentication and authorization. Now, I was saying in a previous video that the times have changed for me and I have a new way of doing this. So let me just explain what I'm in here, right? I want you to imagine that you're building a login website or a member's website, something like that, okay? And in fact, here's a table here, which is kind of handy. And just imagine, if you will, what your typical table would look like. And it's a website and you're going to log people in, okay? So it may look something like this. Of course, we might have a password field here. Uh, perhaps we'll just chuck in a variable character for the moment. Don't worry too much about any of this stuff. You might have an email address. Okay, something like that. That might also be a variable character. And right there, that, my friends, is a very normal type of database design for somebody building a login system. And they would go to the login pages and this would all be cross-checked and blah, 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 blah. Now, I am moving away from this. And by the way, this what you're looking at here is something that I've used for years and years and years. But... I've now realized that it's less than ideal. And to explain, well, I've given you the reason why in a previous video, the reason why it's less than ideal is because it tethers you to a crystallized method of logging people in. And what happens if one day you decide, I want to integrate, um, you know, some kind of other login system, maybe something that uses Google or Facebook or even uses the telephone and I've seen that you know so there are tons and tons and tons of ways of logging people in and if we are going to be intelligent about this I think that we should move away from this type of structure completely and start having a more neutral structure kind of like a blank canvas that can be easily adapted to anything you want and I'd like to show you how that would work from a database perspective and I might say a couple of words about cookies as well if I have time, okay? So imagine, think about two tables, right? Any two database tables. Let's say um, authors and books, okay? So with something like authors and books, you might typically expect a one to many relationship, right? With something like, um, let's say, store items, and item colors, say it's an online shop. For something like that, you could have a many to many relationship. So in order to achieve that, we would need a table in the middle, which I've not made yet. But, you know, the key takeaway is that you can have a shop with lots of color colors um, and an item can be assigned to different colors, multiple colors, and also a color can be assigned to multiple items. So that would be many to many, right? And then you, the other type of relationship, and there are only three possible types, is one to one. So a typical example of that might be, say, citizens and passports, okay? Um, apart from in very strange circumstances, usually one passport gets assigned to one person and one person gets assigned to one passport. Now that is the three ways that tables can be related. Now, let me take you back to the citizens and passports one for a minute here, right? So think about this, which is a classic kind of one-to-one -one relationship, right? And ask yourself the question, well, how would you join these two things? Say you've got on the right hand side passport number and on the left first name and last name, right? How would you go about joining them? Well, you may be tempted to say that you would go into Citizens here and uh, I'm very hopeless with Navicat. I hope I can get away with this. So you might say, okay, I'll go into Citizens and I'll add in a passport ID. This is what I think most developers would do, and I've done it as well, and I think that's a normal thing to do. So I've uh, hopefully I've saved that. 
I'm going to go into passports. You would possibly do that, and you know what's going to happen here. And when it comes to joining them, it would just go something like that to that, and that to that, okay? That's what most developers would do. But there is another way, which is kind of quite obvious. It's nothing particularly intelligent. But the other way is, Okay, so now we've got this kind of bridging table in the middle. And you know what's going to happen now. We're just going to go like this. So that would do that. And that would do that. And with a wee bit of um, PHP magic or whatever, we can easily make sure that we never have more than one passport assigned to one citizen or one citizen assigned to one passport. We can build that type of structure and that will do the job just fine. Now the benefit of doing that type of structure when you think about it is that it leaves this table and this table completely untouched. In other words, we don't need to change the structure. We don't need to mess about with it. We don't need to add any columns. We don't need to do anything weird. All we do is we add this kind of bridging table and everything is cool. So can you see where I'm going with this? I wonder if you can, because let's take this then to the conclusion that I'm trying to go to here, right? Imagine you've got this super duper login system made by somebody else, some other company or whatever, right? Okay, so here's some other third party login system. I'll call this one, um, let's just call it Acme Login, okay? So I'm just going to save this one, right? And this Acme Login can represent maybe some Google login system or some weird thing, whatever it may be, right? But this is this other system that you've not made, but you'd like to use it on your site. So what you could do is you could have a user system on your own site whereby you've got a basic table that's just something like an ID, a code, and a user level ID and you would then have your own user levels that would be things like admin uh, sales member accounts whatever works for you and it would be linked something like that and then as far as this acme login goes all we would need is some kind of bridging table that could bring this to life So now our database structure is going to go like this. We're going to have user levels. That would be our own user levels that we would define, such as admin, support, all of that stuff. We would have our own users table, but notice that it's very basic. It does not have um, email addresses or anything like that in it. It's extremely basic. It would be linked up to user levels like that. Then you would have your third party, party, say your T's, you'd have your third party login system, system X, I'll call it Acme login. But then you would have your, let's call it the bridge table or the bridging table or whatever, this one right here. And this table is going to link the two of these up something like this. Aha, so now we have something very cool. So here's a typical example of some SQL that could link those up and you don't need to remember any of this, but here's the thing looking a little bit neater and here is where it gets particularly cool because imagine if, right, we've now got Acme login here, but let's imagine another company comes along with another login system and look at this one 
first name, last name, telephone number. It's a totally alien system, doesn't even take an email address. So how do we fit that in? Well, there's your answer. And all I've done is added in a couple of bridging tables and the whole thing links up fabulously. Note, I do not need to change their database table structure or mine or anything. All I'm doing is just linking up the tables with these little tiny miniature kind of bridge tables as I call them. And so I think this is a much more flexible structure. It, it looks complicated, but it's not really. In the case of the TronGate framework, there's also going to be a table called TronGate tokens, and that's going to get used for authorization of API endpoints. So somebody will be able to submit an HTTP request with a token, and from that token, we'll be able to figure out anything we need to know about that person, you know? So this is what I'm talking about, by the way, when I say that the TronGate framework has a very agnostic or a neutral uh, outlook when it comes to logging people in. I, I'm not interested in uh, building something that's crystallized in the days of having a table where you get, you know, first name, username, password, email, and all of that. Those days have gone for me. Now I'm moving towards a system that's a lot more flexible and I think a bit more secure as well. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Please leave a comment below. It's kind of a new format for me, these late night uh, kind of theory type videos. And I'm interested to know if you like this type of content. Or maybe you don't. I'd like to know that as well. So please just leave a comment if you could. Let me know what you think of all of this. Do you think I'm making things too complicated? Do you think we should just stick with the one table method with first name and last name and password and all of that? Uh, or do you agree with me that maybe it's time for a change? Let me know in the comments. I'll be super interested to see what you think.